we are very honored to have Lord Godard here, Lord Godard of Stockport. Uh, Lord Godard is the vice chair of um, uh, Blockchain All Party Parliamentary Group and um, uh, uh, very keen uh, advocate of um, financial inclusion, uh, uh, digitalization, blockchain, uh, cryptocurrencies. And we have invited Lord Godard. Uh, just to say a few words on what his thoughts are on uh, on blockchain, crypto assets, and the future of these emerging technologies and decentralization for the UK economy. So, uh, Lord Godard, yes, please go ahead, uh, say, say a few words. Thank you. Thanks, Nazim. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, just a pleasure to yes. be invited to say a few words today. Um, um, and I'm glad that you mentioned um, the work you've done with Age Concern because I'm 71 years young and new to blockchain and it's, it is a new world. Um, but there are millions of people that don't will not have access to it because they don't have the smartphones and the technology. So if I have my remit, I think, in the House of Lords with the blockchain APPG will be to make sure the legislation that comes through is, as you say, secure, uh, gives confidence, and actually delivers what it's supposed to be delivering. Because clearly, at the moment, I think digital currency and blockchains um, are getting a bad rap. I just think that things that have happened beyond our control um, need to be addressed. But also, we're putting in place, and hopefully, through our APPG, we'll be picking up on, on this report and others, to try and form, and we're now bringing together an advisory group of, of experts, um, I hope you'll be part of that, to actually help us develop a framework that can ensure that we redress that balance a little bit, because the future for blockchain is just immense, and the MP, Natalie Elphick, is the MP for Devon, um, and she and I are working quite closely to try and change that political um, dimension uh, of it. Because for us, blockchain can be used in, a, in any number of ways, from public policy to enterprise to social and culture, to health, to prison, to everything. But it has to be right. People have to believe in these things. And, and that's a difficulty. I went to a briefing uh, a couple of weeks ago with peers, and it was quite, in my view, adversarial. And I had to, at the end of it, into, interject on behalf of the people from the digital currency and blockchain people saying, you know, this conversation is a bit like Stevenson with his train a hundred years ago saying, we're now going to move people around at 20 miles an hour and ladies were fainting and people, oh, the end of the world is evolving. When I was a young person, we didn't have email. There was no World Wide Web. There was no mobile phones. And I over, over my 70 years now, and I am probably a bit too old, but I'm just getting the importance of innovation, of change, and it's you guys that are going to make that. It's you people that are going to take this country forward and be at the forefront, I hope, of the activities. Digital currency, Bank of England's involvement, blockchain, and together, I want us to be at the front, not at the back. And at the moment, the view from politicians are it's not the most important thing in the world. And yet, I think in the next 10 or 15 years, they're going to understand that actually it's quite important and we need to devote time and effort to getting blockchain right, digital currency right, and embracing, and I, I'm not being, I don't know how to put this, being politically correct, but this is not an older person's game. We, we're relying on you younger people to actually develop these, but you have to bring us with you. You have to be able to bring those millions of people that don't have a smartphone on board. You have to bring the naysayers on board. And the way we do it is through transparency, honesty, and truthfulness. And I just think that once I've got a more of a handle on it, and, and I'm about to take a, a block distance learning blockchain course, believe it or not, but I am going to do it. So I have that bit of knowledge because every piece of legislation from the House of Commons comes to the House of Lords, and we scrutinise it. And at the moment... To be fair, there are probably a handful of people of the 650 peers that know anything remotely about blockchain. And so I just think it's my duty on behalf of you to become more knowledgeable so that there is an advocate 
for what we're trying to do. There is someone with a little bit of knowledge. And so I'm working with a range of stakeholders to try and en engage and learn that knowledge. And, and I meet people, I went to the Ivy for a big digital meeting and the guys are just, and the girl were just fantastic. I mean, it opened my eyes to the future. And I, I just want to tell you that you have got a voice in the House of Lords. I know people in the other place, as we call it, the House of Commons. And if I can just bring those people together to give you a fairer shout, because that's all we really want is a fair shout. And I think the, the future is bright for blockchain and digital currency. But it is, it's going to be a long road, team, and we need to be on board with this. And the work you're doing as the, the blockchain association that you formed in like 2016, it's just, it's, you are the touchstone. You are the people people look to for advice and support. So I just want to give you my heartfelt support as a person, as a member of the House of Lords, and hope that together we can get the legislation right, we can get the philosophies right, we can get the banks, the, the banks to understand the difference between some of the bad press we're getting and some of the great things that we can do. And I've seen blockchain now used in social enterprises up and down this country. People are building houses via blockchain partnerships. You know, people are changing people's lives. And it's not all about uh, moving money about and, and the bad stuff that's printed. There's, there's a real force for good here. Um, and I just want you to know that I want to be that part of that force for good. And if I can help any of you, my email, godrd at parliament.uk. I'm, I'm, I'm available 24-7. I just want to learn more. I want to help more. And we want to, via our APPG, make sure the legislation is right to give us a fair shout. So um, that's about it for me. Thanks. Um, but I, I, I'm going to sit about the, the, this forum now and hopefully learn a bit more. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lord Godard, for um, sharing some really excellent insights. Um, and some really, really practical uh, points. And I agree with you completely. Uh, thank you again for your leadership. Uh, I think we need, definitely need people like yourself, uh, leaders in the parliament to, to discuss about these, these topics, uh, to advance uh, these technologies. We need a parliamentary level leadership and you are one of uh, the most amazing leaders there. Thank you, thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, for joining us today and for some excellent insights, excellent contribution. Um, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.